Take this opportunity guys to go over my current sneaker rotation. Some people have been asking me about it and I've been... Oh, shit. Oops. Shorty said she coming with a breakfast cause she saw a young nigga pull up in the rover. Now she said she wanna come over, yeah, but I don't want no love. Morning guys, happy Saturday. Just driving to get a haircut now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finish with my cut guys. I think it looks great, looks fresh. Happy Saturday. I need to move on with the rest of my day today. Alright guys, so I'm back home now, freshened up after that haircut. And some people have been asking me what I've been rocking though, recently, I guess. And I thought I'd just go over my definite go-tos in terms of what I put on my feet. Nothing too special in this collection, guys, but hopefully it is of interest. Blah 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 blah. Let's do it. Loafers. <laughs> My loafer collection literally started with these bad boys guys. Vintage Johnston and Murphy brown leather tassel loafers. I picked these bad boys up from probably my favourite favourite vintage shop in Tokyo, Whistler based in Koenji. In terms of sizing guys, I'm usually a size 9.5 US when I wear Nikes, when I wear Adidas, when I wear New Balances as well. And when I go Johnston and Murphy guys, it's pretty much true to size, so I still wear a 9.5, so keep that in mind. I was never sort of a loafer guy before getting that original pair guys, and I, but I love them so much. I hopped on eBay as you do, searched up vintage Johnston and Murphy loafers, and ended up finding a couple more. First one, literally the same shoe, but in black leather, again with a tassel. And then next, I found these sort of snakeskin style. Next pair of shoe guys, or style of shoe guys, probably my favourite, favourite silhouette, favourite type of shoe to wear of all time. Clark's Wallabies, what else can you say about these bad boys? They're a bit munted as you guys can maybe see from the sole, but honestly, again, my favourite shoe to wear. Shorts, with trousers, with everything, I think they're just a timeless silhouette. don't have a pair of Wallabies in your wardrobe, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that you guys invest in some. I also have a pair of Wallabies in brown leather guys. Again, I picked these up in Tokyo at, at Whistler back in Koenji again. Please check that place out guys. They have so many different iterations of Wallabies. Different types of Doc Martens, obviously loafers. The vintage leather shoe collection there is second to none in my opinion and you'll definitely find a bargain like I did with these bad boys. When I'm looking to go for that really really OG vintage 90s type of steez and style guys, I look no further than these bad boys right here. These are the Timberland lug shoes guys, so the three eye lug shoe. I picked these bad boys up a couple years ago, I think 2019. I was at Kicks Lab in Harajuku and I saw these bad boys and I knew they had to cop them straight away. I almost always rock these with carpenter style jeans guys and I think it just goes super well with them. It just really, for me, the ruggedness, the colorways, just the how it's all designed in the silhouette. It's just a classic shoe. Definitely recommend investing in these as well, if that's just these. Literally the only sneaker purchase I've made over the past sort of 12 to 18 months are these New Balance 801 all-terrain shoes guys. Again, I picked these up in Kicks Lab in Harajuku. Very sort of reminiscent of that kind of terrain hiking style. I literally always rock these with green cargoes and I think they go super well. Alternatively speaking, I also use these for hiking. You guys may see they're quite brown and muddy. Um, they actually are a hiking shoe, very good traction. Been on a couple of hikes with my dad, with my family and they've They've served me well, so New Balance 801 All Terrains. They're a bit different, I guess, from the sort of typical New Balance kind of steez you're looking at these days, but definitely worth the investment for sure. That was my current foot rotation, guys. Thank you for watching that part of the video. Hope you found that collection interesting because I didn't. <laughs> Just looking for shakeout now, guys. <laughs> drink, double patty, good fries, take a bite, Nick mm. Mana. Hey guys, I'm back, and I guess I just want to say thank you to everyone. The channel recently reached 1,000 subscribers, which is insane when I think about it. I never would have expected the channel to be here. So I ended up doing an Instagram sort of story poll kind of thing and asking people to 
sent through any questions to me that they had. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question. I don't want to keep this segment too, too long in terms of this particular video. I won't answer every single one in today's part, so maybe this is sort of a part one or batch one. Some questions are actually quite general, sort of random ones, so I'll cover those off quickly now. I'm around 27 years old, turning 28 in a month. I'm around 5 foot 10 in height, 9, US 9.5 in shoes, and around a size 30 waist in trousers. I was born and raised in Auckland, New Zealand, and my parents are from the Philippines, Mabuhay. What do I do for work? I work a corporate sort of office job, guys, in professional services. In particular, I work in corporate finance. I work in financial sort of due diligence where I help companies with other companies and do analysis for when companies want to sell. We all know Tokyo is amazing, but what's the worst thing slash things about living there? It's a great question from Nick or N.Ledger. Definitely check his Instagram account out. He's a good dude. I don't want to sound too, too PC about it, but honestly, there wasn't anything negative about my experience living in Japan. I'd say the toughest thing for me was that I couldn't speak Japanese. Even after a year or 30 months of living there, it was very minimal. So trying to get by, trying to set up my bank account, you know, apartments and all the different sort of life admin, even ordering food, going to the groceries and stuff like that, you take for granted in an English speaking country. Those are probably the most difficult things. Work-wise, work it's kind of the same. I really worked sort of an English-based job, even though 98% of my colleagues were Japanese and didn't really speak much English. I managed to survive, but one thing I guess I learned about being a salaryman over there was just how many hours did I really put in. Next question, best convenience store in Japan. Best convenience store in Japan. Thank you, Cliff, for the question. Shout out to you in Melbourne. I think for me, the best one is probably 7-Eleven. I don't want to sound too generic. Two reasons, I lived right across from one. <laughs> but secondly, I think for me, they do the best onigiri. I think the quality of the rice and the, the filling of the onigiri is the best. I love the yogurt drinks over there and the freshly cut fruit packaged up as well. 7-Eleven, coffee's good too. Next question, guys, and I'm definitely gonna shout this guy out because he's definitely one of my favorite YouTubers and definitely one of my favorite guys on Instagram to follow as well. His name is Josh Galdo. Please check out his YouTube channel. His question was, did you visit Japan often before living there and was it a big culture shock for you? Great question. To answer the first part of it, yes, I did visit Japan quite often. It was actually the first place or trip I had after I finished university. I went with a good friend of mine, one of my closest friends, his name is Keith, shout out to him. From that 2015 trip in January where I went to Seoul and Korea, guys, Seoul and Tokyo, guys, I literally went back to Tokyo every single January for at least a week, sometimes even two weeks. January 2016, 17, 18, 19, obviously up until I had moved there to live in September slash October of 2019. That was probably the biggest shock for me. It wasn't necessarily being in Japan, it was just being in a place where I didn't know anyone, I was all alone, having to start work, having to look for more apartments, having to you know, do my bank account and set up all that stuff. It was all that sort of life admin that I wasn't really used to doing in New Zealand. Alrighty, next question guys, this is definitely one of my favorite ones as well. Um, some people have asked me what my sort of top 10 vintage stores are in Tokyo or in Japan. This is obviously a very subjective list based on sort of my personal style, my experience of shopping at those stores. But my top 10 vintage stores in Tokyo are Whistler in Koenji, Rial in Koenji, Burbage in Harajuku, Don Don Down in Shibuya, Upper Upper in Ueno, Flamingo, which is a branch throughout Tokyo and Japan, Amber Lion in Kichi Joji, Chicago, another branch, New York Joe's, another branch, and Mikmo, which I think is a branch in Shimokitazawa. What is the best ramen in Japan? What is the best ramen in Tokyo? Again, super subjective, really depends on the style of noodles, the broth, Blah blah blah. I think from a scamming standpoint, a dipping noodle standpoint, uh, my favorite is definitely Rokurinsha in Tokyo Station. Um, the best tantan men I had was at Nakiriyu in Otsuka, which is a Michelin star place, which is super good. In terms of ramen chain, guys, I think people probably think Ichiran. Ichiran is great, it's a go to. But besides Ichiran, I would definitely recommend a place called Tenkai Pin, guys. Tenkai Pin. I think it started in Kyoto but has branches throughout Japan and honestly one of the best broths you can get so Tenkai Pen is my other favourite. That's probably it for now guys in terms of all the Japanese related questions. I'll continue to answer more of them in future videos as I kind of knock all these questions off. I ended up getting a few questions about fashion guys. Some of them included you know how would I describe my style, what my sort of fashion inspirations are. In terms of describing my style it's one of those things that's very, again super subjective. I don't really put a label on it. 
But if I had to put a label on it, it would definitely be just the combination of sort of, I don't know, 80s and 90s vintage workwear, vintage sportswear. I take a lot of fashion inspiration from a variety of things, from people who surround me, my brothers, my family, my girlfriend. A lot of my close friends are really good at dressing as well. Shout out to you, Keith. And obviously other surroundings as well, you know, just living in Tokyo, for example, just walking the streets, different types of suburbs have different characters different vibes, different culture, and, and just getting that experience and just combining all of that together. And even things when I was going to work in the morning as a salary man wearing my suit, getting inspiration from those kind of more classy vibes as well. In terms of magazines, guys, I definitely recommend Second Magazine in Japan, Popeye Magazine, I think the other one's Uomo Magazine as well. Top three sort of fashion or Japanese fashion magazines or lifestyle magazines. That's probably it for this session of Q&A guys. I did get a lot of other questions as I mentioned before about Japan, more about my lifestyle, life in New Zealand. Again, sorry if your question wasn't necessarily answered in this part of the Q&A. I'm definitely planning to knock off every single question that was asked to me in future videos. Let's move on to the next part of this video, eh? Hey guys, it's about 9.45 right now. AJ's been in there for about 10 or 11 hours. I'm gonna pick him up now. Pretty excited to see how the tattoo looks and how he's feeling as well, so let's go. Whole day like that. Yeah. Shit. It's fucking so Thoughts check. <laughs> Worth it, bro. What do you think of the the design, man? But it's okay. Can you walk? Yeah. Huh. Oh, this bad boy, eh? Okay.